later on anyway. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Pandey, just come in on that point you made about this Ghatkopar Mulund area seeing uh, a lot of pickup in terms of volume. How much do you think prices, prices could appreciate in that area in the next, say, two to three years? Because, you know, an expected implementation of a project has already caused a price hike. Now that the project is implemented, how much do you think we could see in terms of incremental uh, pr uh, price rise? Mr. Pandey, is my voice reaching you? No, I don't, no, think, I, I don't think he can hear me. So let's just try and fix that audio and let's get Ramesh Nair of JLL India into this discussion as well. He has um, written a paper on the kind of uh, expected price rise that you can see because of so much increased connectivity that Mumbai has seen on account of these projects. Ramesh, hi, good to have you in on our show. Uh, coming on, you know, the point that I was trying to get uh, Mr. Pandey in on, now that um, these projects have been implemented, how much do you think we could see in terms of a price rise in areas like uh, Ghat Kopar and Mulund? See, the areas which have seen the maximum amount of price increase thanks to these three, four infrastructure projects uh, have been uh, Ghatkopar, mm -hmm. have been Chembur, uh, Kanjurbar, mainly all in the eastern suburbs. But what we need to remember is uh, most of these uh, price increases already happened. Mm -hmm. So uh, the last year uh, when the freeway was uh, inaugurated, 12 months preceding that, what we saw was a 28 to 30 percent price increase in areas like Chembur and uh, Kanjurmar. Mm -hmm. So price uh, increase has already been factored in. Going forward, uh, we believe price increases uh, typically would be in that 10 to 15 percent range. And the main reason for that is uh, unsold stock. Mm -hmm. As we talk today, the city uh, is, uh, we have close to 36 months of unsold stock uh, across the city and that's an all-time high. Close to one and a half years back, uh, that number was uh, less than uh, 22 months of uh, unsold mm -hmm. stock. So we don't uh, see any massive increase in uh, price uh, because uh, these infrastructure projects have uh, come up. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Mittal, if you could come in on that, there is a little bit of wealth effect now in the last six months. There has been a, a bit of good cheer on the stock markets that c generates usually a wealth effect. Uh, at least further jobs in the financial sector are not being lost. Maybe a few have also been gained. Any impact at all on demand and uh, therefore on price? Yeah, good question. <clears throat> well, wealth effect is there for anybody to see, but uh, the trickle down of the wealth effect, the transmission of the wealth effect typically happens with a lag. I mean, it doesn't really happen overnight. So for that to happen, I think we'll have to wait for a couple of quarters. Mm. But definitely there is an increased, uh, I mean, there's a renewed interest uh, among the investors community, among some of the real estate projects, particularly I, I'm seeing a lot of interest from the upper middle class and high-end customers, mm -hmm. you know, uh, who were waiting on the sidelines. Now they, there are renewed uh, queries and interest mm -hmm. from their side. Okay, but I actual pickup and all, I guess, would take a while. Mm -hmm. yeah. Since you are a prominent uh, actor in that part of town, the Panvel Airport uh, place, uh, can you fill us in on what is the timetable? When are you expecting that uh, uh, that terminal will be uh, up in use? Oh, it will be very difficult for me to give you a timeline on the exact implementation of the project. <laughs> but as far as our projects are concerned, uh, Panvel Phase 1 is almost ready. Next year, hopefully, the possession would start happening. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, and uh, of course, phase two also is waiting to happen, but that is uh, there's a slight amount of delay on account of some uh, unanticipated delay in approvals. But phase one is all set to be delivered, and that is uh, kind of going to redefine the iconography. That's one of the hugely in demand projects in that area. So that is definitely going to create a lot to the ecosystem in the Panvel area. Mm. Mr. Pandey, if my voice is reaching you now, uh, how will all of this benefit many of your projects that have been stuck, you know, the, uh, the Malad SRA project, projects in Vikroli, and the high amount of potential that you have in the Vasai Virar project as well. Just take us through uh, in the due course of time, say in the next 12 months, how will improved connectivity help you um, uh, as far as these projects are concerned? Yes, Sonia, I think in last 12 months what we have seen is that the uh, that the overall the construction activity has picked up. So even in some of the suburban areas of Asaivira region, even in Malad, uh, even in uh, projects like Vikroli where the work has again started, because of this improved connectivity, because of this point-to-point -point connect and the seamless travel, especially on the eastern part of the Mumbai, I think a lot of these projects have started to seeing the benefit. As I said that the volume has already picked up in some of these areas. 
uh, areas like Vasai Virar region, we have just recently got an approval for one of the largest township project, mm -hmm. uh, which will have around close to 500,000 houses. So. Uh, overall, I feel that the volume, once the volume starts to pick up, the execution has already started to happen. Approval processes have become improved considerably in the last six months. So once the volume comes in back into the market, uh, I think in the next six to eight months, we'll also see a price increase. And as far as the affordable housing segment goes for us, especially in Vasai, Virar and Panvel area, those have been already doing well for us over a period of last one to one and a half years. So we expect now the city of Bombay will also see, the, see a renewed volume and where all these infrastructure projects will help us getting more people from, especially from the central part of Mumbai, uh, who would now be willing to go to Ghatkopar and Thane areas. Do you see that proposal of increasing the FSI to 4, do you, do you see that go through anytime soon? No, it's not only an FSI actually. If you see, uh, uh, I have not heard anything about it, so I'm not sure whether it will go through. I think the problem was also with respect to the infrastructure available to support this kind of increase in FSI. Absolutely. I think we need to work more on parking, we need to work more on uh, urban infrastructure of sewage and drainage and water supply. So just by increasing the FSI, I don't think it will kind of uh, improve the problem. Yes, one step which government has taken in terms of providing a a point-to-point -point connectivity in kind of decongesting the city, connecting the western part with eastern part through metro rail. I think some of these steps will help. Increasing the FSI, uh, I don't see a solution as of now. Yeah, it would in fact add to a problem. I hope not for my city's sake. Anyway, Ramesh, uh, you know, as you pointed out, uh, these are projects which uh, uh, have already uh, increased prices in prop pockets like uh, uh, Chembur, Ghat Cooper, Khanjur Mar. What's the next big area you will watch out for uh, in Mumbai? Definitely uh, the Navi Mumbai uh, belt, uh, we believe, uh, if you look at... Navi uh, Mumbai extending all the way to Panvel? All the way to Panvel. Uh, if you look at uh, the freeway, for example, uh, freeway, uh, the South Mumbai to uh, Chembur used to take uh, 90 minutes. Today it takes uh, less than uh, 15 to uh, 20 minutes. So that's a big game changer. If you look at the east-west uh, connectivity through the metro, it's to take around uh, 70 minutes to go from uh, Vikroli, uh, from Varsova to Ghatkopar. Today it takes uh, less than uh, like uh, 15 minutes uh, on the metro. So again, uh, decongesting the city. Uh, previously, uh, everyone was using the road uh, last week. The so how much in Navi, Navi Mumbai, you said, is it one area? Any yeah. other areas and what kind of price rises can? I think uh, there will be a lot of industrial land uh, coming up uh, on the eastern uh, side of the city which will uh, get redeveloped uh, into residential. There's still a lot of land uh, in areas like uh, Kanjur Mar. That will depress prices, isn't it? It will keep the prices stable. Okay. That's why we shouldn't uh, expect uh, any massive increase of 25-30% per annum. I think we should be comfortable with that 10-15% to 15 percent, uh, per and, annum price increase. And in your uh, assessment, which are the biggest uh, realtors uh, listed or unlisted which could uh, get impacted because of this? On the eastern side, uh, developers like uh, Vadva, uh, developers like Kalpataru, uh, developers like uh, uh, Hapta, uh, these uh, people have uh, a number of projects uh, which will uh, see a positive impact. All right, gentlemen, uh, uh, this is an uh, interesting and riveting topic and of personal interest for all of us. Thank you very much uh, for filling us in, Mr. Mithal in particular, uh, Mr. Pandey and Ramesh. Thank you very much for joining us in this conversation. We will have, of course, uh, more discussions on the upcoming Mumbai infrastructure and its impact. You can watch this entire conversation on moneycontrol.com slash CNBC TV 18 as well. We take a break.